127 to 106, it's all over and a much needed win for Sacramento. And Trey Lyles and Sasha Vizankov returning to action. And Ryan, not a moment too soon. Oh boy. Boy, do the Kings need these guys coming down for this stretch run, which now say goodbye to the Jazz, who are a bad basketball team. No more bad teams on the schedule until arguably the last game of the year. Every team you're playing from here on in, you could put Brooklyn in a so-so category, but you, you're going to have to play at a very high level, and you need everyone on the roster. Napes, would you say that was the Kings' last formal hard practice of the season? Yes. Thank you. That's exactly what it was. I, you know, listen, I, I knew the Jazz were struggling. I mean, obviously, their record is their record, and they haven't won a game in weeks. I didn't think they were this bad. Boy, the Jazz no. are horrible. Yeah. They're bad. Uh, yeah. You look at uh, the third quarter stretch where the game was put out of reach by the Kings. The Kings did the exact same thing this game they did against the Mavericks, except they capitalized on offense and extended the run. It was all over after that, Napes. All right, let's start with Trey Lyles. He played 19 minutes. He was in double figures with 11 points. He was active on the glass with five rebounds, three assists. Looked pretty good, didn't he? Yeah, I, I thought he looked really good. And remember, there were combinations on the floor tonight that probably have never played together this season. Yep. So the fact that he had to blend in a little bit with that, very positive, certainly could have gone worse when you miss that much time. All right, what did you think of Sasha? Um, I actually, I thought he was okay. I mean, you could tell he hasn't played in a month and a half, but uh, I liked how he got the steal and got out there. So um, he didn't look out of place, Grant, which sometimes guys do a little bit slow, a little hesitant. They both actually, that's the big positive. Both of them were not hesitant. So maybe the extended time off or the extra time being questionable helped out. King shot the ball very well from downtown. And what do we say? When the Kings shoot the ball well from three, they normally win. And tonight they were outstanding. Yep. And uh, not only do they do it from behind the arc, they do it in the paint too, which means they were inside out. Spray threes, Mike Brown will talk about after this one. But Keegan Murray, Grant, this guy has been shooting the ball really well for about three weeks now. Yeah, well, they're going to need everyone shooting the ball very well. I mean, that's just the way it is. Harrison Barnes. Seems to love playing against the Jazz. You remember opening night, he went in there and Something torched them. Made another, another good game here this evening. Something about it. Uh, I, I like how the Kings are trying to, if you notice, sometimes if they get late in the shot clocks, and it may have just been a tonight thing, they sought out some mismatches specifically with Harrison down low, and he was aggressive, and it worked. And aggressive Harrison is a good Harrison. All right. Hey, don't forget about New Works Plumbing. Uh, they've got a fix for you for your plumbing needs and repairs. Just go to sacserviceplumbing.com or call the number on your screen. New Works Plumbing, they've got a fix for you, and they're available around the clock 24-7. Kings win, and uh, they they this was in the category of a must win. After everything that happened last week, or I should say, well, yeah, last week, tech, considering it's a start of a new week, but you know the way they lost to Dallas, particularly on Friday night, um, if you had lost to the Jazz, I don't think you would have won a game the rest of the year. This was a absolute must-win game. Uh, no doubt about it. And, um, you know, you weren't sure what morale was going to be like. Practice uh, yesterday was a little bit melancholy, still a little quiet. It was a big loss regardless, but I like that they were able to find some energy. So good on them. We've seen them lose games like this in the past. Yeah, well, they have. And uh, there's zero room for error. The Mavs continue their red hot stretch uh, they beat yes. the rockets and so you know you got to just think right now and we've talked about this for weeks without malik monk and the dallas mavericks with a relatively light schedule compared to the kings i'm not going to concede anything but i i really think the i think the mavs might move all the way into the fifth spot to be honest with you yeah, they very well could, and um, they're playing their best basketball at the best time. If you're the Kings, Grant, you're shooting for the seven, but you're okay with the eight for some of the reasons that you've laid out about the Kings playing on the road. Yeah, I don't have any issue if the Kings have to be on the road for a play-in. I don't think it matters to this team. I mean, I've, I've, I'm not just going by this year, Ryan. I'm going by last year as well. You know, this group, this nucleus with this coach, for whatever reason, I'm almost more comfortable with them being on the road in a big game. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like there's less pressure on them. They feel a little bit looser. And tonight they felt loose, which was a good thing. It wasn't too uptight, but you make a great point there, Nibs. All right. Again, uh, the uh, Kings win. Uh, this one, I was at the game against Dallas. It looked like Monk was injured on purpose. I, I didn't 
I never once know what that didn't see I didn't, that. I, I no. totally disagree. Uh, Barnes must keep being active. Uh, people have been saying Fox needs to score 30, 40. No, Barnes playing well is more important. I think it is very important without Monk's uh, offense now. You, you need it to be picked up by others. So I think Harrison Barnes is important. I don't disagree with that. Okay, but we also need to factor this into the equation. Harrison Barnes was good tonight, but a lot of those looks came from De'Aaron Fox. He was distributing the ball. His assist yep. numbers were really good. So maybe that puts the onus as well on De'Aaron to get the guys like Keegan and get the guys like Harrison going because De'Aaron should be able to turn it on at any point. Well, I think it's just, uh, you know, at this point without Malik Monk you, you and without Kevin Herter too, you, yeah. you need – I mean, it has to be by committee. Everyone's got to play up to their expectations. No doubt. What did Jerry say? This team, before the injuries, was playing better than they actually were. The Kings have to do that now the rest of the way. All right, you want to get to some calls? Yeah, let's do it. Who do we got on the line? Let's go to, oh, <laughs> my man, Zach. He spent about 30 minutes with me last night. Welcome in tonight, Zach. Uh I'm feeling pretty good. I hope you guys are too. Uh, great win today. That game was pretty much the third quarter. The third quarter is where we won it. That was the run. Uh, De'Aaron Fox, um, Harrison Barnes played excellent. It, it, uh, Ryan is right. De'Aaron today was looking to pass the ball a lot, and I like seeing it. He was trying well, to get all, his teammates. It was, it, first of all, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a great win. Beating a team like the Jazz is never going to go into the category of a great win. Oh, it's, a big, it, it's a it, definitely a big win. I'll tell you Thank why. You, but it's not a great. It's not a great win. Let's let's not get carried away here. It's a win that they had to have. But it's not a great win when you play a team like the Jazz. If they beat the Clippers coming up next, that will be a great win. If they go on the road and beat the Knicks, that will be a great win. If they beat the Celtics, that'll be a great win. Beating the Jazz sacks not a great win. Come on now. I understand what you're saying, but a lot of people were scared coming out of that injury and everything that we 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 might lose this game. Everyone's down on their knees. Everyone's just sad. I mean, we had to. We came out and did what we had to do. So it, it was a solid win. Uh, I agree it wasn't, you know, yeah, beating the Knicks or anything, but we got to be happy about this. We And we took care of business. Not only did we beat them, it wasn't like a five-point win or anything. It, we blew them out. Uh, and what I'm the happiest about, Zach, was the fact that Trey Lyles and Sasha Vizankov returned to action because there's no way you're going to be competitive down the stretch without without those guys, particularly Lyles, much more than Vizankov. Getting Trey Lyles back is huge for this stretch drive without Monk. I agree. Uh, they they both played well too today for their first yep. time coming back. Uh, I actually gave an over and under to my friends, uh, fifteen and a half points, and they got sixteen combined. So that was pretty cool. Um, I, I like seeing Davion. He was trying to push the ball up a little bit when he was in the game. I kind of yep. like seeing that. Uh, that was pretty good. I like him being aggressive. And speaking of aggressive, I like when Keegan leads the the team in, in shots, and he was he was on it today. Uh, I like him getting open looks from everyone. Everyone's trying to feed him, uh, Sabonis and Fox, of, of course. But um, uh, Harrison was making everything today in that third quarter. And like Ryan was saying, Fox was uh, setting him up pretty good. No negatives yep. tonight. Yeah. Everything and was a positive. And, and we shot 50% from three today, which is <laughs> pretty crazy, yeah. insane. I know. Uh, I was, yeah, 20 of 40. Yeah, uh, 20 of 40 is going to win you a lot of games. Yeah, if you're shooting 50% like that, 21 threes or whatever it was, that you're, you're going to win. Uh, we shot, what, 53 from the field. I was getting yep. a little worried in that first and second quarter. We were giving up a lot of those wide-open threes like usual, uh, in the corners especially, and they were making their threes, and they're usually a bad three-point shooting team. But um, this was a good first game without Monk, and hopefully we can keep it going. Yeah, well, no again, I'm not judging. I'm not judging anything against the Jazz. Don't even think about. Don't think that way. Your next three games, okay? You got the Clippers, the Knicks, and the Celtics. All right, and uh, the Clippers all of a sudden are starting to play better. They've won three in a row, and they are a matchup problem for Sacramento. Even though the Kings beat them the last time they played, but guess what? They didn't have Paul George in that game. Uh, they uh, beat the Hornets tonight on the road, 130 to 118. The, RS, the other aspect with the Clippers, you never know who's going to play and who's not going to play. They've been relatively healthy this year, but, I mean, sometimes you get towards the game, and all of a sudden a player pops up on the injury report. Yeah, so yeah let, it just changes, just yeah. Let me, Great. Uh, I, also, Great point. I, I also want to say, um, I was telling Ryan this, I think, yesterday, that we needed, we had nine games left before today, and we needed four to really be that seventh and eighth seed. Uh, I think to get the eight, the seventh seed, we probably got to win five, and the, one of the games has to be, be Suns. To be safe, you probably got to have six and beat the Suns. But um, 
I think five and the Suns game could get you seven. Um, and then for the eighth seed, we probably need uh, four wins. We got one today. And I was looking at the schedule. Hopefully we can get the Portland and the uh, uh, the Nets one. And then we got to stick it out with getting lucky maybe with some Boston people getting rested for that Boston game or getting a revenge on the Knicks. <laughs> And uh, Boston, Boston's not going to be resting, guys, this, or with this much to go. Here's the other part. Has anyone really looked at Phoenix's schedule? They play, coming up, New Orleans, the Cavaliers, the Timberwolves, the Pelicans, the Clippers, at the Clippers, at the Kings, at Minnesota. What a brutal schedule that is for the Suns. Yeah, that's tough. I mean, we, 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 we should get that – I mean – I don't want to get too excited, but we have a really good shot at getting that seventh seed, have two games at home, and get in the playoffs. I, I don't want all the Kings fans being sad and stuff and uh, demoralized after this Monk loss and everything. We got the win today. We took care of business, and we win four games. I think we could get that seventh or seventh seed, uh, and maybe and one of them has to be the Suns game. But uh, I think we got a good chance. Anything could happen in the playoffs. Uh, but I don't know. I mean. I just want to be a little bit more optimistic because the Kings fans uh, I've seen lately have been down in the dumps after a uh, season over everything. Well, the season's not over until it's over. Uh, I understand why the fans are in the dumps. I mean, the game on Friday was a was the biggest game of the year. They were up by double digits in the fourth, and they lost. And I get yeah. that. And they lost Malik Monk for arguably the year. So I, I get the fact that Kings fans are down. I'd be down too. Uh but the season's not over. It just made the season much more difficult. Doesn't mean it's over. It just made, made the mountain higher to climb. Right. But even if we won uh, the Mavs game, it wouldn't didn't, didn't guarantee a six seed either. So we might have been in no. the same spot. You never know. Uh, even without months. Well, what a, what a shoulda, coulda. I mean, we we only got a few left in the season. It is what it is, and it's it's pretty straightforward at this point. Great teams, you're gonna have to play great. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's hope, you got let's hope so. you got what eight games left, right? Yeah. So, okay, let's just assume, and again, I'm only doing this for the sake of conversation, that you beat the 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 Blazers in the last game, and you beat right. You yep. you went okay. through this schedule. Yeah. Uh, the Clippers to me is is I got to favor the Clippers without Monk. Okay, I just do. I agree. I, I, have, I agree. Okay. But but not not by a wide margin, maybe 55% to 45%. Is that would, would we fair. agree on that? I mean, I don't think it's yeah. like huge. Uh I'm I, I have to favor the Knicks uh, uh slightly. Uh I have to favor the Celtics big time. Big. Uh, I, I would I gotta, say the Knicks. I, I don't know slightly for the Knicks. I I think that's yeah. changed. I'll tell you why. My experience of doing the games and over the years, Fox plays huge at Madison Square Garden. He loves being in that building, and he just he he is a, a special player at Madison Square Garden. I'm not saying he's not, in, but hmm. he's he, he loves playing in that building, and that that's why I said that. Uh, maybe more maybe more than a slight, but. What do you think the point spread would be in a game like that? Knicks by six, five, four, four um, to five? I'd probably say six and a half. Yeah. Okay, without I, was, Monk. Yeah. I don't look at point spreads that much, but no, I'm it, sure they it, factor it, them. But, I, okay. I, think, well, I think, yeah, seven. Okay, six, but, seven. but here's the point I'm trying to make. Other than Brooklyn and Portland, do you think it's safe to say the Kings are going to be underdogs in every game they play the rest of the year? Maybe not. Maybe not. Right. Oklahoma who, who City. They, who, who are they going to be favored against? It, well, maybe New Orleans. Maybe. They're not going to uh, I don't see that at all. Yeah, okay. I don't either. I, I, I guess. Saying. I guess the point. But here's the point I'm trying to make. You're you're set. You're um. You're you're not in the. T you're you're two games behind six, and with. Eight games, but that's that's that, and, and it's just not looking good for that. So I think Zach's right. I, I think you got to look at just be at home. And I know that I say I don't want to contradict myself. I know the Kings seem to play somewhat better on the road, but I'm with Zach. You know what? I'll take my chances of knowing that I have two home games if I lose the first game, as opposed to being on the road. 
I, I like that scenario much better and, to get into the show. And Napes, and Napes, you have a bitter taste in your mouth coming off of the Mavericks two game thing. So maybe, maybe there's some extra inspiration there. Yeah. I do, I do think that uh, I think I, I do agree. I think we probably won't be favoring any of those uh, bigger games, but hopefully we just need like one of, you know, the Suns game is probably the most important. If we get the Portland and the uh, Nets and the Suns, I think that 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 could be good enough to get the seventh seed. That could be good enough. Maybe one more win to be safe, but there's a, we have a very good shot again that seventh. Uh, if we just keep playing, I mean, shoot 50 percent from three, if we can keep doing that, that'd be nice. <laughs> Zach, yeah. well, good hearing from you. Take care, guys. Appreciate it. Hey, appreciate you, Zach. Thank you very much for the call. And I also want to tell you uh, about Bennett's. Don't forget about uh, their great seafood and steak, prime seafood and steaks at Bennett's. Three locations, Sacramento, Roseville, and the West Side Grill in Rockland. Go to Bennett'sRestaurants.com. Check out the menu and more. That's Bennett'sRestaurants.com. 60 different types of wine available by the glass. And they have happy hour specials on their apps and drinks. And it's a great place to be. Three locations. You'll find the same great food at all three locations. That's Bennett'sRestaurants.com. And don't forget, it's brunch season. It's beautiful weather, minus yesterday. But uh, get out there to Andre's bottle of champagne, $44. Pretty awesome. Uh, Napes, I'm going to get to Walter here in a second. But if there's no Brandon Ingram, and say Zion has a rest management, you can't see the Kings possibly fail. Yeah, but that, yeah, yeah, we, we need to stop it. We need to stop that. First of all, the game is stop uh, what it happens because, almost what, what, every what time the Fox, Kings. Go. What happens if Fox doesn't play? Okay, it, 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 fair enough. But what does it Sabonis not? Does, what happens if it, Sabonis doesn't play? How many times does that happen? When was the last I, time Fox and or Sabonis didn't you, play if you, they weren't you, injured? You, you really think the Pelicans are going to rest Zion Williamson if it's a huge game? I'm and they not need it okay. For, Napes, I'm not. not gonna uh, who know? Uh, uh, Napes, Ryan. I'm just saying, Ryan, we've if seen. They're playing for, Ryan, if they're we've playing, seen weirder. If they're, Ryan, Ryan, if yes. they're playing for the sixth spot, and Zion Williams can play, he's playing. They're not going to rest him in a game like that. Napes, if they've got bigger games down the road, there there is no bigger and, games. They only have two games left when they play Sacramento. Right, I, I, Nate, I'm just saying we've seen weirder things with this Kings team last year, this year, where guys all of a sudden sit out for no reason. And it ends up in their lap. That's the only reason I thought they might be favored. I digress, but you are right to a degree, Napes. Walter, thanks for waiting and hanging in there with us. Welcome to the show. Hey, what's up, fellas? What's up, Grant? How you hey, doing? how are you? Good, man. How are you? Thanks for calling the show. Uh, well, I just wanted to say it's good to see you. Uh, I used to be a longtime caller of yours when you had the show. It's Walter from Stockton. Awesome, Walter. So It's great that you're on. Uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you very much. I just want to say this was a good needed win tonight and it's very good to see Trey Lyles back on the court. Oh, sure is. Yeah. Miss Trey Lyles having that size and Sasha too. That's another bonus. I think we're really going to need both of them coming down this stretch because we've been undersized playing a lot of guards and I think this is going to be good for us. It's going to be a tough stretch and I really think if things play out, we can still get that six. It's going to be really hard because you lose the tiebreaker against uh, New Orleans. And, the, the, you know, we're talking about New Orleans more than we're talking about Dallas right now just because they don't have Brandon Ingram. But that is going to be very, very difficult. All right. Uh, so just keep that in mind. And the conference record right now, Dallas is up by a game in the conference so they would have the tiebreaker there too but that could change but the the pelicans the tiebreaker is big because you're two back with eight games left you're so for all intents and purposes you got to make up three games in right. eight games and that's really difficult what does their schedule look like down the stretch uh well dallas is, is very difficult new orleans is not as difficult pull it up right now for you but, new but ryan we also, you know, I'm going to assume that Brandon Ingram is not coming back for, I'm just going to assume that. And again, there he, he's going to be reevaluated uh, this week. But I got to tell you, New Orleans have been playing pretty well. Here's their schedule the rest of the way, okay? Phoenix, 
So something's got to give there. Then they have Orlando at home, San Antonio at home, at Phoenix, at Portland, at Sacramento, at Golden State, home Lakers. They got a very difficult schedule. Very difficult schedule. So, I mean, it's possible, but like you said, it's very going to be very difficult. And I, I just really want to see us. We need to beat New Orleans just to kind of say, hey, you know what? We beat you guys, you know, because yep. we have. Yeah, I think uh, psychologically, we need to beat them. You're going to have to beat them for a lot of reasons. That's number one. And number two, yep. you may have to win that game uh, to get either six or seven. Uh, again, you got to remember, New Orleans plays Phoenix twice, okay? that That's huge. They play Phoenix two times. And don't think those aren't huge games for those two teams. Huge games. Oh, that's going to be huge for everybody down the stretch. I think this is going to yeah. be very entertaining basketball these next two weeks yep and i have the confidence in our kings and i just want to say thank you guys thank you for your show and thank you for your time thank you. hey yeah. you know what i appreciate you taking the time good to call, call walter thank you yeah yeah very good you know just ryan reading dallas's schedule excuse me yeah. phoenix's schedule and new orleans schedule and the kings i mean those three teams whereas dallas not as much but boy, those are those are all difficult schedules, are they not? No, they're they're imp- well, I'm not going to say impossible. They're very very hard, Grant. And I can't talk about the other teams, but talk about the Kings. Look at how much rest there's been in between the Dallas game and then a day off in between Dallas and the Jazz. But then you finish up with eight and thirteen days. Yeah, like and it's the toughest stretch of the season. I, Maybe Ryan. Ryan oh. not only that. But there's a cross-country trip involved with that. Correct. Where after you come back from Oklahoma City, you only have one day off Mm. before you play New Orleans. Brutal. What happened the last time the Kings only had one day off? And I know they're coming home from OKC, but from a cross-country trip, they lost. Lost Well, they they beat Philadelphia, and then they lost to Dallas. Oh, excuse me. They lost by Dallas to 36. So, uh, But that was a little bit different. But still, Ryan – this is this is a brutal. It's you brutal. just pointed yeah. it out. That's a brutal finish. I mean, it really is. Hey, I want to tell you about Fosters and Paws. They have puppies available for adoption. They're a group of animal advocates. They do a lot of fabulous things. I, I love how they work with families and young people to teach them the lifelong benefits of pets. Just go to fostersandpaws.org slash adopt and uh, ask about one of their puppies that are available to be adopted. That's fostersandpaws.org slash adopt a group of animal advocates, very passionate of what they do. That's fostersandpaws.org slash adopt. The beam is lit, Kings fans. Yes. Thanks for being with us here on If You Don't Like That. Teddy, thanks for waiting. Welcome in with Grand Rhino. Hi, you guys. How are you doing? Good. Great. That's good. I think that the Kings have a chance to make a big run in the playoffs. Teddy, we can't hear you. I think. I said I think the Kings have a chance to uh, make things interesting in the playoffs, and I think. Well, Teddy, they got to make the playoffs first. Let's not let's not talk about making it interesting in the playoffs. They got to get to the playoffs first. Yeah, but we just need to be positive. That's all we need to. Be. Hey, Teddy, we don't need to be positive at all. That's not our job to be positive. Our job is to tell you what is happening. Our job is not to be cheerleaders with pom pom, Teddy. Thanks for the call. All right. Stop talking about, you know, you're going to be dangerous or you can do something in the playoffs. You got to make the playoffs, Teddy. All right. You know, we're not, our job is not to be positive. All right. If you, if you want, you know, positive, 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 go watch someone else. Seriously. Our job is to talk about what's going on, what we think is going to happen. Talk to fans that are objective and understand what the hell is happening. But no one right now should be talking about the playoffs with no Malik Monk and the schedule upcoming. The Kings have to make the playoffs. They're going to be a play-in. We know that if they're not yeah. six, they're going to be a play-in team. And then they have to they have to get it done. They have to get it done. And Ryan and I talk about this all the time. It's all about matchups in this league, right? And if all you play – it, it looks now, and it could change, Ryan. I mean, there everything mm-hmm. could change. It looks now like there's a good chance Sacramento will be playing Phoenix in Which a play-in. Strange. You know? I, I don't know I, if it's great without that, Monk. Can you outscore them without Malik Monk? 
I, probably not. You got to muck it up. You got to drag them down. But we've seen the Kings drag down some good offensive teams. We haven't seen it without Malik Monk. So we do need to see that. But with the other teams, I wouldn't mind trying my hand with Phoenix because they're so, they're like the Kings, Grant. Sometimes they're know, very they're inconsistent. They're Jekyll and Hyde, Ryan. They're Jekyll yes. and Hyde. Yep. So, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yep. And I don't disagree on the whole with Teddy. If there is a route, and Grant, 100% with you, you got to get there. But if somehow the Kings could get to a spot where they're playing good enough basketball where Malik Monk can come back, sure. He's not coming might. back. He's not coming back. He's and, not, he, he, his timetable is four to six weeks. The playoffs right. start in three weeks. I mean, April 16th is the play in. Yes. Uh, it, 90, it, yeah. You would have to make. You would have to make probably the Western Conference Finals. My guess would be NBA Finals. Yeah, Yeah. I doubt it. But anyway, you get my point. All right. Napes is calling me out. You see? Even even I'm being too positive, Zach. Welcome (laughs) into the show. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I just wanted to give you guys a heads up. Um, That call by Teddy, I think actually the first thing he said, he said uh, the Kings are going to make a deep run in the playoffs. That's what he believes. And uh, uh, no, I, I don't. I disagree with that. It's just not realistic. Yeah, yeah. Unless if yeah. Fox and Sabonis, you know, just blow out. You got to make the playoffs first before oh, you can I make any kind of run. Napes, Napes, Teddy, er, Zach was just picking us up. He was just recapping. He I thought understand. you didn't hear. No, I understand. I understand. I, I know. But I'm just I, Teddy gets us hot. I get it. But go yeah. ahead, Zach. All right. But I'm, just, <laughs> I'm saying, like, yeah, obviously, things. if that were to happen, I think Fox would have to probably average 40, Sabonis near 30. Um, anyways, um, yeah, I think that's the third time I've seen Teddy come up here and just as you guys ask you guys some bullshit question and or say something like that. So just watch out for that, guys. Hey, yeah, Zach, we're, not ta- Zach. we're not taking Teddy, we're not taking Teddy's call anymore. So don't worry yeah. about it. You won't see him on anymore. And, and Zach, I want to thank you for saying that. And I want to thank everybody else in the chat, because when we have knuckleheads that come in here and they act like dweebs, you guys usually police it. So thank you. (laughs) I do like that too, Rhino. You're exactly right. I love it. (laughs) I feel like great names. I feel like we should be paying some HOA dues on our site and everything. I I just don't know. I love it. 40 or 43 and 31, right? You are, (laughs) <laughs> I think believe we are right. Say that again, Zach. Sorry. I believe we're 40, 43 and 31. After yes. Tonight. Well, yeah. So what do you guys 31. think? What do you what do you what what do you think with eight games left? What's everyone on the chat line think the Kings record in these eight games are going to be? All right. Mm. What what do you think? Zach? Zach, here I'll give you the games really quick. Let me let me run them down for you, okay. so you got a fair shake out of Zach. All right, so coming up: Kings, Clippers, New York, Boston, Brooklyn, Oklahoma City, New Orleans, Phoenix, and Portland. And I didn't even give you where they're at. Those are the teams. Well, just for the people that want to know, the 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 Knicks, yeah. Celtics, Nets, and Thunder games are on the road. All the other games are at home. I would yeah, say Knicks. Uh, I'll say three Knicks, and Celtics five. is back to back. I'd say three and three five. and five. I mean, if you can get you the think Clippers, what? I think three and five at the very max. I mean, Clippers. If you can get the Clippers, maybe. But I just the way that things are going right now, no. Mm. I'm so going to say I'm going to say the best they can go or excuse me the best that they will go was 4 and 4 because I'm going to take Brooklyn and and Portland and put them in the win column and then you got to win two of the other six and I think they can do that so I'm going to go 4 and 4 That's fair I'm with you, Grant. I'm fo- at four and four as well. Realistically, my heart tells me three and three, but or three, and, excuse me. All right. So that, so you got 43 wins three right now. That puts you at 47 wins, one less than last year, but 47 wins will not get you into six because right now, Dallas and New Orleans have 45. All right. I think. 
It's not going to do it. I just think that the Phoenix Suns game that's remaining is probably the most important game as far as like, because that could be a big tiebreaker between seven and eight. eight. So I think if they lose that, I think they're automatically eight. I'm not necessarily automatically, but very close to be an automatic eight. If they win that, I think it's a good chance they end up with seven. Good call, Zach. Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Have a good one. Thank you, Zach. Most people on the chat line had the Kings going three and five. I, I, I'm going to say I'm expecting big time things from Fox like tonight. And for that reason, the Kings are going to win a game that I'm not expecting them to win of the games mm. that we just mentioned. And I think they're done with losing games that they're supposed to win because we're at that time of the season. And the only two teams left on the schedule, that I think the Kings should win is at Brooklyn and the home game against Portland. The other games are, I, I mean, I think the Kings will be probably underdogs in all those games. So we'll, we'll see. But you're going to have to play. Ryan, the one thing I think everyone can agree with, a, a game is what it's going to take the rest of the way. Every single night. you yep. the, the run that they had against Dallas the second time in the third quarter can't happen anymore. They have to capitalize on every yep. opportunity they get, Grant. Amen. Want to get to uh, Baki? Let's do it all the way. Coming in from Serbia. Hopefully he's in a better mood. Baki, welcome in, man. Hey, what's up? What's up? Baki, how are you? <laughs> Hi. I mean, it's it's awesome how, how this show is going more and more and more interesting day by day. And it's more interesting that very, very often both of you are right uh, about one subject, even though you have different view about it. <laughs> So, uh, so I'm I'm very often find myself just between you guys, you know, Fair because enough. Uh, uh, I mean respect to to Grant and you, uh, of course. Uh, Grant is very experienced, and he was traveling with the team so many years. I mean, you must you must give a credit for every single word because. Uh, uh, having perspective from from uh more angles about about those finishing finishing games because you have you have not only playing the best teams in the league in the last eight eight games but there's a traveling uh you know we are going to new york right after from from california and it's never easy to play against the team who is sitting at home and uh, as I know, New York will play Miami Heat and they will go back having one day rest and then hosting the Kings. So uh, it will be maybe 40, 50 percent easier for them to play, uh, even though they are robbed tonight. I don't know if you if you maybe watch the scene in the in the last sequence of the game that they were they were robbed uh, uh, at the last in the last second. So. Never mind. Yeah, against uh, uh, against Oklahoma City, uh, that was a tough yes, loss for them. You know the yeah, deal with the, yeah, but listen, the deal with the Knicks right now, more than anything, is their health. Okay. Yeah. So we need to know who's going to be on the floor for the Knicks. Out of all the teams the Kings have left on their schedule, the most uncertainty about their roster is the Knicks, and. That that is the key for them. They're, they're, they they have a lot of key players that are right now very close to coming back, have come back, then they're out again. So you really need to see who's going to be on the floor. And that's, you know, the Miami Heat, they're not playing very well, but they're physical. And they they you know you're in a game because they defend you. And so let's keep yeah, that in mind when you get to New York. You, you got to first of all see who's playing. You, you know, also- Grant – now yeah. that you say it, because you've got New York before Boston, you bring up a damn good point. That might be one of those games you say that they're going to steal. It might be it for all the reasons you said. And New York, they like to play the defense. That's what the Kings are going to have to do. Last yep. time, low scoring. Great point, Grant. Great point. Yeah, Rocky. but 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 we'll in see. the same time, you have you have uh, uh, a lot of things happening outside of the Kings because you uh, okay. A lot of people are hoping just, I mean, everybody hoping that we can catch that number five or number six. But uh, if that is going to happen, 
they need to clash between you have tomorrow uh phoenix playing playing against uh, new orleans so one of them must lose the game you have dallas mavericks playing two time against two times playing against the golden state warriors in the next eight games and dallas mavericks also have a really tough schedule so no dallas does I mean, not have a tough schedule i disagree phoenix, with you dallas phoenix. has a relatively easy schedule compared to sacramento phoenix and new orleans their yeah, schedule yeah, is much Grant, easier. Uh, yes I, I saw it but i was i was thinking about uh, playing against the golden state the the team who is uh, trying to to reach the the plane so those games can really be difficult I mean, for both teams. The, the, the Warriors are not having a good year. They're very Jekyll and Hyde. I know their roster is good, but the Dallas Mavericks right now are a significantly better team than Golden yes. State. Yes, they, they are. are. They, and they and are. the way they Dallas, are. the way Dallas plays, it translates to the playoffs. It translates really well. Yeah. Hey, yeah, hey, I, hey listen, Bucky, I, I appreciate you going through all of this. Here's what here's where where we're at right now. We, we all have a wish list. You have a wish list, Ryan, and, and I think ours are all similar. We try to analyze what's going on with other teams. The only thing that matters right now, the Kings need to control what they can control. They can't control Amen. who's going to win tomorrow. They can't control who's playing for the Knicks. The only thing the Kings can do is control what they can control. And if, and I'm going to put if, if the players like Harrison Barnes, like Keegan Murray, right, like Trey Lyles now, and the other – if everyone plays to their ability, then the Kings have a chance to go four and four in these eight, okay? If that doesn't happen, they're not. Control what you can control. Yes. I mean, it, it, we have fun. This is what we do. We interact with you, and every everyone tries to say, well, gee, this team's playing that team, and then they have this game. That No, just control what you can tr control, and that's what the Kings have to do, Baki, because despite everything that we're talking about, it's going to be – very, very, very difficult to finish fifth or sixth. It's just, I know. It's just this. Yeah, you're gonna need a lot I, of help I, and a great finish. Yes. Yeah, I know. I, I am, uh, I am on your side because I don't think we can make. If I, if I'm gonna bet, I, I, I will bet that we are in a plane. Okay, so if you ask me, but I'm yeah. just. I'm just speculating, speculating what can happen or not. But okay, it's it's only as you said, it's only for fun. Okay, I I, I take it like that. I take it like just for fun. But uh, you okay? Let's go back to to what will we have to do? Okay, if you ask me, the the most important game is always the the next one. So if we can somehow put our strengths and beat clippers in the next game it can be really successful maybe okay maybe four and four as you said maybe five and three as everybody wish but uh let's say I, I i i i cannot imagine what will happen if we lose that game because if you lose against clippers then you go to the east coast long trip going to the new york who is fighting for for their number two three four i don't know so like like uh it's the same like uh, against the dallas you remember when i say when we all all three of us we are saying you only said that this first game is not that important last, like the second one and you Correct. remember when i said if we lose the, the first one the second will be really tough if you if you lose so that's yeah, the point i, yeah, I said that too. that's, that's the point we lost the uh, our our race for the fifth and sixth when we lose the second game against Dallas. So I hope we're not going to lose against Clippers because if we're going to lose against Clippers, it's going to be really, If you lose really against tough. the Clippers, yeah, you're in trouble. Hey, Baki, we appreciate you always taking the time. Uh, thank you very much, man. You have a good uh, morning, okay? Have a great day. Yep. Appreciate it. You know, we can go, we can talk about if, 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 if until, you know, we're... we're yeah. I mean, it, it's just Baki made a good point. You only worry about your next game. That's the game you need to worry about. And the Kings are, you know, I guarantee you the Kings aren't like trying to sit around figuring out who's going to play and who's not going to play because it really hasn't mattered with Sacramento <laughs> this year. 
they, Nate, know, they, Nate, they actually you, play better. They actually play better when teams are at full so, strength, you know? You, you remember growing up when your parents just say, hey, you got to go with me. Where are we going? I, I can't talk. Just get in the car, right? Like, yeah. if I'm Mike Brown, I, I maybe the guys haven't looked at the schedule. Keep the media away. Take the schedule away from them. Just put them on the plane. Don't tell them what city they're going to. Show up to the city. Find out about the team. Go in, play, and lose. I'm serious, Grant, because it's going to be that kind of effort. Like, just throw it out. Hey, don't guys, even, where do you think we're don't going? Even tell them where, don't even don't tell them. Even where tell them. Going. Right, don't, don't even tell, tell them. You make them guess. Yeah. Don't tell your pet that they're going to Gold Country Veterinarian Hospital only because <laughs> I read I read some of the procedures that they do. And I, if I were, a, you know, a, a dog or a cat, I wouldn't want to know what's going to be happening to me. But they do great work and uh, they are located in Auburn. They serve the foothills, Roseville and the greater Sacramento area. They're full service. Uh, they do dentistry, surgery and wellness care. They're dedicated to urgent care. So when your pet needs to be seen, they are available. Advanced internal medicine. They have full surgical care. They have the most modern technology, and they're very proud of their pain management protocols for faster recovery. Gold Country Veterinarian Hospital in Auburn. They do it all. I could just picture all of the cats and the dogs in all the living rooms across the world right now just scattering when they hear gold country because it's like pain control and oh i, I know when we take our lacerated eyelash lip i know when we take our dog to the vet and pull up in the car <laughs> the dog just starts freaking the heck out oh, before yeah. we even even open the door you you it knows where it's going it oh does, yeah it's, it's unbelievable isn't it you know? they know the turns Dave. once you hit a certain point <laughs> They know where it's the like, road it's ends. Like a, it's like a human being going to the dentist. Nobody likes going to the dentist, yes. right? Yes. Well put. Well put. Oh, my God. Uh, man, good time. Good I job by your Kings. Good job by your they, Kings today. It's, uh, it is it is going to be fun uh, doing all these shows uh, the rest of the way. And again, with the Clippers, I really mean this. You just never know. Yeah. <laughs> what the Clippers lineup is going to look like. I mean, you know, the Kings got a break when they played the Clippers in L.A. last month, Ryan, or yep. earlier you know, this Paul month. George. Well, I guess it was last month. Uh, I guess what the hell is it? It's still March, technically. So it was earlier this yeah. month when they didn't yeah. have Paul yeah, George. Hours. You know. Yeah, yeah, they didn't have Paul George. And you remember the key with that was that's when the Kings were running a little bit more zone and yep. the Clippers didn't really have a guy that was getting it to the middle other than Leonard because they were doubling Leonard. That, good point. Hey, I want to tell you uh, about Blazona Development and what they have going on, uh, ColusaSunrise.com. Blazona Development with uh, Sunrise Landing, beautiful homes on uh, various different lot sizes, six models to choose from, no Melaroos, no homeowners, great access to some of the major arteries like I-5 and Highway 20. Just go check out these beautiful models for yourself at Sunrise Landing. From Blazona Development and uh, ColusaSunrise.com will get you all the information uh, that you need. Well, the Kings uh, got a game that they absolutely had to have. They took advantage of a bad Jazz team, and they looked very good in doing so. And I think the real key for this game was you got Trey Lyles back, and you got 10 minutes for Vizankov, and you're going to need both of these players, particularly the experienced Lyles here in these final eight games. Yep, and I would add you've got at least from what we saw tonight of Harrison Barnes in the last couple games that is ready to play. He's willing to yep. roll his sleeves up, and Keegan Murray shooting the ball really well. Uh, stat of the night, great Napes. We didn't talk about this. 24 offensive rebounds between these two smaller yep. teams. How about that? Hey, don't 24. forget, we will have all of the coverage that you need pregame before the clips halftime uh, and post game. Thank everyone really for joining us here. Appreciate all your calls and all the folks that are joining us via the uh, chat line and uh, Ryan, good job. Uh, hope you had a good Easter and everyone else. Hope you had a great day and we'll talk to you soon right here on, if you don't like that, please subscribe. If you have not already done so, give us a thumbs up and we appreciate each and every one of you 